Hey guys, I uh, want to walk you through a handful of activities today. They're all short. Um, they all deal with color range and a new selection technique called uh, Quick Selection Tool. We'll use those both independently and in combination um, with each other. So this is going to be five activities. You will turn in each one of these activities independently and I'll show you how to do that as we go. So let's go ahead and open up Photoshop. And once open, you're going to open up a handful of files that you should have already downloaded from Schoology this week. They're in the Data Files folder. So um, download, those, uh, download those to your desktop first, and then you can go through this process. So I'm going to go to File on the menu bar and Open. And the first two files I want to open are Music and Horn. And I'm going to select both of them at the same time. So I'm going to hold Command uh, with my left hand, and I'm going to select uh, Music and Horn, and then I'm going to hit Open. And I'm prompted with this message. It says some text layers might need to be updated, so I'm going to hit update. And I'm left with two files. Um, I've got music right here. I've got horn right here. If you're not seeing those arranged like this, it has to do with how you have it arranged um, under your window menu. So if you go to window, first option is arrange. So if you select range, you can see various options here. So if you go up to two up vertical, uh, it's going to put the files side by side. Um, and likewise, if you go to up horizontally, uh, one will be above the other. I like to work in tabs, so I'm going to go to Arrange, Consolidate All to Tabs, and that's where I am now. So what we want to do is bring the horn over to the music file, and we want none of the white to be there. So the first thing you need to do is unlock your background layer. So just click the padlock, it unlocks it, and now you can work with it. Now, I'm seeing sizing handles and what's referred to as a bounding box around this image um, and that's because i have my show transform tools or show transform controls button clicked up here so that option exists when you have your move tool so i'm going to uncheck that so i'm not distracted and now i'm going to use a uh, selection technique same one we used last time which is color range because i'm going to go through and select all the white there is in this picture and then flip my selection so go to select on the menu bar we're going to go to color range and I've already done this before, so I know the settings, but let's say my fuzziness was set to zero. Um, actually, I had an issue. I, I didn't see this box was unchecked. So maybe you open up color range, and if your localized color clusters is unchecked, and you try to go through this, this process, um, oh, now it's working now. I, it was, mine was glitching first. So if yours is not working, try checking or unchecking this box uh, to get your color range to work better, um, just in case you run into that issue. All right, so what I want to do here is I'm going to select the white. So this is my initial, initial selection, this first eyedropper. So I'm going to sample anywhere on the white, right there, and you can see what is selected. Now, with this initial dropper, anytime that is chosen and I select a different area, it's going to replace my previous selection. So I actually want to add to what is there. So hit the plus button on that eyedropper, and then you can either click on this area right here or you can click in your preview. I'm going to go with my preview so I can kind of see what is selected, what's not selected. All right? What you want is you want solid black on white because that um, indicates the greatest contrast, so that's what we want. And my fuzziness is set really low. All right? So think of fuzziness as the way to include more variations of that color you're selecting, which in this case is white. So let me bump that up to 26. And when I bump it up to 26, you'll see the edge detail gets, it becomes great, much better. All right, so I am actually, when I'm looking at this preview screen, I'm primarily looking at the edge detail. How can I get the greatest amount of detail along the edge? So as I bump that up, I got even more detail. It went in and got that white that's right in there between the horn. I can see that. So let me keep going just a little bit more. And if I, I keep going, I'm at 104 now. Now I'm starting to see detail from the horn come through, and that's no good. So let me take this number to 70, 70. I have good edge detail. The detail of the horn is not coming through, so I'm going to hit OK. All right, so it's gone through, selected the edge of the horn, um, and it's got exactly what I want. All right, so now I simply need to flip my selection. So select on the menu bar, inverse. The horn is now the item selected, and then I'm going over my tool panel to, panel to the left, and I'm going to get my move tool. That's the top tool. When I have my move tool, I click on the horn, hold the button, or hold the button down on the mouse, leave it held down, and drag it over and drop it on the canvas right there. Right, I drop it on the canvas, and I'm going to position it about there. Now, as I zoom in on this horn, you can kind of see the edge. Um, 
is a little pixelated uh, white edge. So I'm gonna see if I can fix a little bit, a little bit of this by defringing. So let's go to layer on the menu bar, and I'm gonna go all the way down to where I see matting right there at the bottom, and I'm gonna choose defringe. And let's see if two pixels is too much or just is okay. So I'm gonna put two pixels and hit okay. And you can see that cleans up the edge a little bit. Um, two may have been too much, so let me hit uh, a combination of buttons. Let me hit Command in the button Z, as in Zebra, and that takes me back a step. Now, I'm gonna go back to Layer on the menu bar. I'm gonna go down to Matting, to Fringe, and let me just do it by one pixel this time and hit OK. All right, I like that. It's cleaner, it looks better. So now let me zoom out right about there. And I'm looking over at my layer panel here. So I want my horn layer, all right, and let's call it a horn. So where it says layer five, I'm gonna double click it and type horn and hit, re or hit return. All right, so there's my horn. I want this down below all the text layers. So I'm clicking on it and dragging it below the text layer right there, and that's what I'm left with. Now, if I hide the horn, I can see there's a hand in the air there. I don't want that hand to be visible, and that is showing up on layer one. So let me just click on layer one right there, and I'm gonna drag that to the trash can to get rid of it. It's gone. All right, so horn is there. Let's show it again. I'm gonna show the horn, and with my move tool right there, I'm gonna visit, oops, Command Z, had the wrong layer active, select the horn layer, hit the move tool, make it come down to where I can see it. I want just a little gap at the top. Okay, um, actually then move it up just a little bit. That's better, that's better, because I want to see some of the detail as well. Um, let me take my guitar right here, the guitar. Uh, let's rename it, so I'm layer four. I'm gonna double click and call it guitar, G-U-I-T-A-R. And I'm also gonna move that down and out of the way just a little bit so I can see more of the horn, that's what I want. So now I can see some of the horn, some of the guitar. I'm gonna go back to the horn because I want to drop the opacity. I want it to be somewhat see-through. So with the horn layer active, I'm going up to my opacity setting there and I'm going to take that to 90%. So just you can use your slider. I'm just going to type 90. So that takes it to 90%. It softens the picture up a little bit easier to see. Um, everything else looks good right there. Let's go and this background layer right there. Let's drag the background layer to the trash can. So click on that, drag it to the trash can. All right, it's now gone. That's what we want. And let's click on the rainbow blend layer, that one right there. And let's, let me see something. All right, let's see the rainbow blend layer. Let's convert that to a background layer. So go to layer on the menu bar, new. And we're gonna choose, oops, layer, new, background from layers. What we got there, it makes it, it locks as a background layer. And everything else is the way I want it. So I'm gonna go to file. I'm going to go to Save As. I'm looking at my desktop, and there should be an image editing folder I created right there. And I'm going to create a new folder called, uh, we'll call this, I want to call it the week, um, let's just call it week three. Okay, week three, and hit create. All right, so it's going to go week three, and I'm going to open up week three. Come on. All right, so I'm inside week three. It says music, that's what I want, and hit save, and hit okay. And that is now saved in that folder, and we could reference it later on if we need to. Now, in order for you to turn this in, I need your zoom factor to be a little higher than this. So right here, where it says 100%, change that to 150, so 150. All right, so 150, I can see more of your canvas. And it's at this point, I want you to hold the buttons Command Shift and press the number three. It takes a picture of what's on your screen and it will put it on your desktop. So, there we go. All right, so it should be sitting right there somewhere. It just showed up. So there is my screenshot. So I'm gonna right click it, choose Rename. And I want you to call it Music Store. Okay, and this is just going to be an image. So then you're going to, let's go ahead and drag that to your image editing folder, put it inside of week three, and you'll know where it's located, okay? So that's the first activity. So I'm done with that, I'm gonna close it. Don't save, and I'm gonna open up the second activity, okay? That second activity, you are gonna isolate uh, some iPhones and put them in front of an Apple store. So let's go to file and open. 
and we're going to go to desktop and it should be your chapter 3 data files. You should have created a folder to download those into. And I'm going to open up the picture of the iPhone and hold command and open up the picture of the Apple Store and hit open. Alright, so there is my Apple Store. This is the iPhone I want to isolate, okay? So first thing we need to do is unlock your background layer. And then let's try color range first, see how well this works. So I'm going to go to select on the menu bar, go to color range. And I'm going to sample the white background, hit my add to button, and try to include more of what's there. Now I can see I'm really picking up a lot of detail on the phone in my preview, and that's not what I want. So let me drop my fuzziness down, take it about half down to 30. And I'm still picking up a lot of detail. Let me take that down even more. Oh, and I'm seeing detail and I'm losing a lot of the edge, the clean edge. Um, so what this is telling me right now is color range is not going to work for this particular image because there's too much um, variation of that color white or reflections throughout the image. So I can't really isolate it entirely with color range. I could use a multi-step approach, um, but that would kind of be a waste of time uh, because I know there's an easier way. So I'm going to hit cancel. So there's and this is to show you there's no any one selection technique that's going to work all the time. So let's use a selection technique called quick selection. And it's real simple. Um, it simply involves grabbing the quick selection tool, getting the proper brush size, and brushing over the object you want to select. So quick selection is one, two, three, four down, fourth button down. Um, and you'll see quick selection tool. If the quick selection tool is not coming up for you, try a couple things. First thing I want you to do. Go to window on the menu bar, workspace, and make sure you're in essentials right there. And then once you do that, go window, workspace, and choose reset essentials. That will reset your workspace, should reset your tools, but if it does, that still doesn't work, I've seen that, um, then a workaround is simply to go to the search feature right there and type in quick selection. All right, so quick selection tool, select that, it'll put it up on your, um, put it up there for you. All right, so I'm going right here to my quick selection tool. I held it down in three options. Now, with a quick selection tool, you have your initial selection, whereas if I make initial selection right there, and if I go to make an additional selection, it's gonna replace what I, well, it should. I had mad to, never mind. My initial selection, if I go to make a, make this smaller. If I make an initial selection right there, and I go to add to it down here, it keeps jumping on me. It's trying to know what I'm doing. So anyway, the initial selection is supposed to replace what was um, previously chosen, but this is trying to anticipate what I want to do anyway, so it's trying to outsmart me. All right, so I want you guys to start with your Add To button right there. It allows you to make multiple um, Add To selections. And then you simply paint over the item you want to select a little bit at a time. Now, this works really well if there's a decent amount of contrast between the picture, the item you're trying to select and whatever background it's on. Now pictures vary greatly, um, both in image quality and the way they contrast their surroundings. Um, so this will react differently for each picture. The other thing you need to understand is brush size is very important on this. So a couple ways to switch the brush size, probably the uh, most intuitive is right here. So if you click on this drop down arrow right there, you can adjust your brush size by moving the slider, so that's probably the most intuitive way to get there. Um, if you like shortcuts, if you look on the keyboard, your bracket keys are the third row from the top, um, and you have your right and your left bracket keys. They're third row from the top and the second and third button from the right. So if I hit the one on the left, that sizes it down, the one on the right sizes it up. So I'm going to keep going. I'm going to select the phone, and I'm making sure I'm getting as much of it as possible. If, by chance, you select outside the phone, you can do a couple different things. One, you can hit Command and Z to take it back a step, or you can hit your minus brush right there to paint over what you don't want selected. And we'll be using that as well. So, as I analyze this picture, I think it looks pretty clean. Um, I, could be, I could use other tools to be more precise, but for this activity, this is fine. So let me get my Move tool. And now, I've got my Move tool. I'm going to click on the object and not let up on the mouse button and hover over the Apple Store, bring it over and drop it right there. Okay, So I've brought the image of the iPhones over 
and I'm going to name my layer. So let's click layer, uh, double click layer one, and I'm gonna call it iPhone. Okay, so iPhone, and I'm gonna resize this as well. So is so long as I have my move tool, I can go to show transform controls right there, and I'm gonna hold shift with my left hand and resize this down just a little bit. Okay, so I can see I took it down right about 70%, we'll take it up to 70, okay. All right, so I resize that to 70%. I don't want this bounding box showing, so I'm gonna uncheck my show transform controls. All right, so that looks pretty good, but I want the exact same thing on the right-hand side as well. So let me go up to this iPhone layer, and I'm gonna right-click it and choose Duplicate Layer. So right there is Duplicate Layer, and I'm gonna call this iPhone 2. And it's there, it's just directly on top of itself. So if I have my move tool, I'm gonna to click and drag it to the right. All right, and then I kinda of wanna change the orientation of this. So let me flip this horizontally. So to do that, I need to go to Edit on the menu bar, and about halfway down you see a, the word Transform. Hover over the top of that, a sub-menu will pop up and choose, oops, Transform, and go almost to the bottom where it says Flip Horizontal, click that, all right, and it changes the orientation of this phone, so it's flipped horizontally. All right, so I like the way that looks. I'm gonna go ahead and save this to my desktop, so File, and Save As. We're going desktop, I'm going to my image editing folder. This is week three, and I'm gonna call Apple Store, file name is fine, hit save, and okay. All right, so that's good for your records to maintain that file, but in order for me to grade it, you need to take a picture of it. So make sure your zoom factor is right at about 66%, and I want with your left hand, hold command and shift, and right hand, press the number three. That takes a picture, and minimize Photoshop, For that to go away. All right, where did it go? It's right here. Okay, so I'm going to right click that, rename it, and we're going to call this Apple Store. Okay, and I'm dragging this into my image editing folder. I'm going to week three and I'm dropping it right there. So now you can see I have two. Um, these are PNG files if I stretch this out. I have two PNG files and two PSD files. So the, it's the uh, PNG, the, those are the ones you're gonna upload, those are the images, okay? So let's go back to Photoshop, close the documents we have open. Don't save it. And we go to File, Open, and now we're gonna open up a couple more, two new files. So Desktop, go to your Data Files folder, and I'm gonna open up Zoo, and hold Command with my left hand, open up Giraffe, and with command key still chosen, Giraffe 2. So I'm actually opening up three files at once. Okay, so I'm gonna hit open. And asking me to update, I'm gonna update. So now what I have is I have the zoo file right there. I have this giraffe, and I have this giraffe. All right, so let's go ahead and start with this giraffe here. And I'm looking at the giraffe, and then I look at the layer panel, and I'm like, whoa, what's What's going on there? All right, so I think what I see is the giraffe on its own transparent layer. So let me let me just zoom in to these thumbnails just to make sure. Um, actually, I could just do this. Hide your background layer, and I can see the giraffe is simply sitting on a transparent back background. So what that tells me is I don't need to use a selection technique. I can just move this over. So go ahead with your move tool, move this giraffe over to the zoo, and drop them right there and position it down in the left corner. And you can see that giraffe is sitting on this document. All right, that's good. But I'm looking at that giraffe and I don't really like that giraffe. So even though I moved it over, I'm gonna hide that layer. So go ahead and click the eyeball next to that layer. That giraffe is still there. I'll be able to see you brought it over, but I want you to go ahead and get this giraffe and bring them over. So let's go ahead. We're actually gonna use a combination of both color range and the quick selection tool to obtain this uh, to select this image before we move it. So go ahead and unlock it, hit the padlock, click the padlock one time, and let's start out with uh, color range first. So go to select on the menu bar, go to color range, and when you're there you can see the settings I used the first time I did it, so let me start again. Um, I'll bump my fuzziness down. 
All right, so got my plus button right there. Command D. Start there. Oh, you're gonna be difficult this time, huh? All right, so let me boop, move my. Let me uncheck. See, see if that's doing it. Yeah, it's localized clusters doing it. So you can either have this play around with checking that or don't check it, whatever. I'm gonna have it unchecked for this particular activity. And now I'm going to start bumping my fuzziness up. Um, and this time, because I'm gonna use a combination of two different selection tools, the only thing I'm really focused on is edge detail. All right, so I'm gonna keep bumping that up because I'm gonna go on, go in after the fact with my quick selection tool and clean up the middle area. So as long as I can see a good defined edge right there, let me do 70, because that's what I did um, just a few minutes ago. Uh, 70, it looks like that. I'm gonna hit OK. All right, so my major focus is along the edge right here. And the edge looks pretty good, except for a couple areas right there that I'm gonna have to fix. So let me get my quick selection tool now. Actually, let me do one thing first. Let me, yeah, quick selection tool, we'll do it this way. So the, the parts in the middle, I don't want selected, because I want the white to be selected. So I'm gonna get my minus brush right there with my quick selection tool. I'm gonna bump the size of the brush up just a little bit. So if I go up there, I can take the size to maybe 85, 90, something like that. My brush is a little bigger. And I'm gonna paint through these areas I do not want included. And the only thing I'm really focused on is making sure I have a clean edge selection. So just do a little bit at a time. So that's looking good. Up here, I gotta clean this area up, maybe the face a little bit. Let me just, one click there, one click up there. I have pretty good edge selection, right? All right, I think that looks good. Now, next step, we're gonna flip our selection. So go to select on the menu bar, go to inverse. All right, we flip the selection, the giraffe is now selected. Let's grab our move tool right there and move this thing over to the zoo file. All right, so wow, I'm at the zoo file and I have a gigantic giraffe. Look at that thing. It's too big for my file. What should I do? All right, so if I look up at the top, as long as I have my move tool right there and I look at my options bar at the top, the show transform controls, if I click that box, it's going to put a bounding box with resizing handles so that I can resize this file, but I need to get to them. So in order to get to them, let's hit command and the minus key, command and minus, the minus button. Do that a couple times, a few times actually, and you can see I can zoom out far enough to get to the sizing handles. So now I simply need to resize this. I'm gonna maintain my aspect ratio, which means uh, resizing it both width and height uh, using the same, aspect, same ratio. So I'm gonna hold shift with, shift with my left hand and click on one of the corner sizing handles and just drag this thing down and reposition it. All right, so I reposition it. And then finally, I'm gonna hit my check mark to commit my transformation up there and uncheck the show transform controls. And now I'm gonna press the command and plus buttons to zoom in. So now I have this new giraffe on this file. I'll move it down just a little bit. Um, but, but I've decided I want him facing the other direction. So let's flip this horizontally. So I'm gonna to go to edit on the menu bar. I'm gonna to go to transform and let's go flip horizontal. All right, so he's now facing the other way. I just need to reposition him. That looks good. Um, let's go ahead and I'm gonna take my, my text layers right there. I'm gonna put both of those at the top. So let's slide that one up right up there. So that text layer is at the top. And I'm gonna put a, I'm gonna make a layer group for these two text items as well. So up here on your uh, layer, panel, pen, uh, layer panel menu button right there, click that and choose, where's new group? Choose new group, and let's give it a different color. So let's drop down to orange. And the name of this group is gonna be text, T-E-X-T, -E and I hit okay. And let's go ahead and move that all the way to the top. And I'm gonna move both text layers inside of it. And this one right there, I'm going to select that. Oops, not that. I'm gonna right click this layer right here and change the color to orange. So now they're both orange, and I can hit this downward facing arrow to collapse that uh, layer group. So that's good. Let's save this file. So file, save as. We're going to put it on your desktop inside your image editing folder, week three, and zoo PSD. 
save it and okay and that's the file you save for your records but i want to see a screenshot so let's change the zoom factor to 150 right down there 150 down here i did it the zoom factor and hit enter it zooms uh, into 150 percent and you're going to hold command shift and press the number three it takes a picture of what is on your canvas um, let's go ahead and minimize this and wait for this to do its thing it should go away i don't know why it's taking so long and it should pop up right there move it to the middle you're going to rename this so right click it rename and we're going to call this zoo enter return and let's pull it inside your image editing folder I'm on. week three and drop it right there so you got your zoo png right and you have your zoo psd i want you to oh i want you to be uploading oops sorry about that guys you're going to upload your png image not your psd all right, so that was Zoo. The next one's really easy, so let's go back to Photoshop and close this one, close this one, and close this one. And we'll save it. All right, so the next uh, short activity is easy, so file and open. All right, we're going to go to desktop, down to our data files. We are going to coffee and hold command and select coffee mug to open multiple files at the same time. Hit OK. And let's update. All right, so I have a picture of coffee mugs and a picture of this that I just called the coffee. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and move everything. We're just gonna move this one layer over. So to do that, let's click on the padlock right there to unlock it. Get your move tool and just move the coffee cups over to this document. Now, at, when you first look at it, you're saying to yourself, dang, that didn't work. Why did it work? I don't see the image I moved over. I've, I've done this one in the past in person in class and kids always get tricked on this one. All right, so when that happens, look over here to the right and analyze what is going on. So the image actually did come over, but it's hidden by this layer. And I could prove that if I just hit the eyeball. So we can see it's there, we just can't see it. So y'all are smart enough to know that you simply move it up above that layer, right? So now that image is above the layer. We're gonna reposition it, center it just about like that. And we're gonna rename the layers as well. So where it says layer two, double click it and call it, let's call it Mugs, M-U-G-S. And this layer, we're gonna call this, uh, we're not gonna call it anything because we're gonna move it down here. So let's click on layer one, drop it just above the background layer. And let's take this background layer, select that background layer and drag that to the trash can because we don't need that anymore. All right, and then we're left with layer one. So layer one, we're gonna make that our new background. So with layer one selected, go to layer on the menu bar, go to new and choose background from layer. All right, and converts that to a background layer. And we're almost done, uh, just a couple steps. Let's sit right there where it says no half calf here. Click on that layer, drag it up above the mug layer. So we have our text showing above the mug layer. And let's, last step, let's put these in their own group. So go up here, let me show you a little trick. So if I go to hold shift, if I have that layer selected and I hold command with my left hand and select the other layer, they're both active, right? So now if I go up to this uh, layer panel button right there and choose, look at this option, new group from layers, I can click on that. It'll automatically put those layer or those layers in this layer group folder. Um, let's make it green. We'll call it text, and we're going to hit OK. All right, so now I have my layer groups, and if I expand it, you can see they're both there. If I collapse it, um, they're consolidated to a group. And let's save this to your desktop for your uh, records, so file, save as. All right, we're going desktop. We're going to go our image editing folder, week three, and copy PSD is fine. Hit OK. And for... A grade for me, you need to zoom in. So let's take this to 135%, so 135 down there and return. That zooms in. And you're going to hold Command, Shift, and press number three. It takes a picture of what's there. And when I minimize this, all right, it puts this image right there. I'm going to right click it, rename it. And we're going to call this coffee. Oops. And we're going to take coffee. 
and we're going to put it inside of our image editing, image editing folder week three, and drop it, and I now have that coffee PNG image that you can upload to Schoology. All right, last of the short activities, um, don't save it. All right, so I'm going to file, open. All right, and it is, I'm going to go to my desktop, data files, we're going farmer's market right here. All right, so what we have is some stuff going on right there. So uh, let's go ahead and move some things on, around in the layer panel first. So all your text layers, let's take those to the top. All your text layers, take them up to the top. All right, so I have all my text layers at the top. That's what I want. Um, this veggie layer, I'm not going to use that. So click that veggie layer and drag that down to your trash can. And drop it. Um, we don't need this background layer either. So click on that, drag that to your trash can. And you're left with this, this market image as your background. So let's make that our background. So with it active, go to layer on the menu bar, new, and choose background from layer. That makes it your new background layer. Now we need to bring a couple images of produce over here. I want you to find a we're going to bring an image of a tomato and an image of a carrot. So to get those images, I'm going to have you all go to the internet. So let's go to Google. I'm going to type uh, tomato. All right, and I'm going to go to my images tab right there. So when I go to my images tab, you can select whatever tomato you want, right? So I'm going to just tools. Uh, I can go to tools. I can do size. I can search by size, large, medium, large, or large, medium, um, or icon. I'm just gonna leave it any size right now because the background image is the farmer's market I'm dealing with is not that big. So I'm gonna use these, these tomatoes right there. So I'm gonna click on those tomatoes, uh, just like that. I'm gonna, they're actually pretty large if you look at the size. I'm gonna right click and right click the image and I'm gonna choose, let's choose open image in new tab. So let me choose open image in new tab. It'll open the image in a new tab, and when I click it, you can see it opens the image in a much larger um, image size. So now I'm going to simply right-click the image, choose Save It, Save Image As, and I'm going to choose a location. So I'm going to go Desktop, I'm going to go Chapter 3 Data Files, I'll put it in that, and I'll just call this Tomato, and hit Save. All right, so I have an image of the tomato. That's good. And let me go find uh, carrots as well. So let's type carrot right there. Now oh, let me see something that may work. Um, looking for, that's a huge, oh, let's see what this one's all about. That's too small. It gives you a preview of, image, uh, of the image size. We'll try this one. Uh, one of the problems when you deal with files this large is when you size it down, it may pixelate itself. So let me right click, uh, choose open image and new tab. You know, it only opened as a thumbnail, so that's not gonna work. You can see by the file size. So let's uh, scroll down and see if we find a different one. Uh, let me see with this. Let's just go with this one, that's fine. So it's, even though it's small, just right click it. Let's go open image and new tab. I click on the new tab right there. Let's go ahead and right click this image, choose save image as, <coughs> and let's type carrot. And it should be in my data files, it is. So now let me go back to Photoshop and I can go to file, open, and let's bring the tomato in first. So open up tomato. All right, so that's what I'm left with. Let's unlock our background layer and Let's, uh, let's try a combination, uh, let's try a different, let's try a different tool guys, I'll show you a different one. So fourth button down, one, two, three, four, something called your magic wand tool. And like before, it, it doesn't come up, simply go to your search feature right there and type the name magic wand tool. All right, so what this does is you can click on any, any pixel color and it'll go select similar pixels of that color until it runs up to, against a different one. So this setting right here, tolerance, works much in the same way as fuzziness and color range. So let's just start with 30 and see what happens. So if I click on the white, you can see it went through and picked up all the white pixels there, right? Up into this point. So there must have been a big enough difference in color that it didn't select it. 
But if you have your add to button right there, if you hover over the top where I'm pointing, that's your add to. That's like the eyedropper with a plus. Um, that's selected. I can now just click on other pixels close to it, and it's going to select up into the point where it runs up against something else of a different color. So that's pretty good there. Let me zoom in Command Plus. All right, so it picked up too much there. So let's go use a combination of tools here. Um, but before I do, let me include this white area there. All right, so I included the white area there. And with my magic wand tool, or not magic wand, quick selection, I'm going to uh, add to this selection right there. So hit the plus, or actually I'm going to take away from this selection right there. Now right, so I'm able to just click those small areas, <coughs> clean up that selection, and we command minus, and I can see the white is the area selected, not the tomato. So let's flip that. Actually, let me take away that area too. It's kind of jagged. All right, now let's flip this selection. So select inverse. The tomatoes are now selected. Get your move tool. Move that over to the farmer's market and drop it. And they came in pretty big, right? Um, almost looks like they didn't come in very good at all. Let me zoom out. And press your show transform controls to size this down. Get your transformation, let's zoom in, command plus, and you have them in there. Uh, not the best clarity, but it's fine for this activity. Okay, so you've got your tomatoes in there. Let's bring your carrot in, in as well. Go get them. So file, open, and open up the picture of the carrots, the bunch of carrots. Uh, unlock the background image. Let's use color range on this because you see all the white that's kind of in the middle there. Uh, color range will be the most efficient. So let's go to select on the menu bar. Let's go to color range and hit your plus button. And we're just going to click on the white. And if we bump up our fuzziness a little bit, we'll see what that does with the level of detail. Now, this image is not the best quality uh, by any stretch of the imagination. That's too high. Let me tell you, I'm at 132 right now. It looks like it might be OK. Hit OK. Um, all right, so I don't like the way it looks in there. So let's go get our magic wand tool right there. And we're going to add to this selection. So I should be able to click in there just a little bit. And I'm not going to get this perfect because the image is garbage. But I can clean it up just a little bit. And you can begin to understand the principles I'm using and practice with the tools. Because when we, in our level two class, we're trying to really do high level work, we actually take our own pictures as opposed to trying to find ones off the internet that are no good. Um, and anybody that's in graphic design does the same thing. So for this activity, that's good enough. Um, let's go ahead and flip your selection. So select, oops, didn't want to do that. Back to Photoshop. Select, inverse. The carrots are now selected. Get your move tool. And let's move that over to the farmer's market. We drop in our carrots. And let's resize them. So get your show transform controls and resize them down. And I don't like the way all that white is showing in the around the uh, greenery around the carrots. So let's do this. Commit your transformation, uncheck transform controls, and let's go to layer on the menu bar. Uh, go down to matting, defringe, and let's defringe it by let's go three pixels, and hit OK, and that cleans it up just a little bit. Looks a little bit better. Um, let's rename this so layer two. Call carrot. Didn't want to capitalize it. Tomato layer one, double click it, call it tomato. All right, and let's finally just uh, put harvest market, uh, the three text layers in their own layer group. So I'm gonna select each, I'm gonna select them all, so hold command to select all three, and then go to your layer group button up here, choose new group from layers, and we'll call text layer, and we'll give it a color, go purple or violet, all right, so that is our layer group. All right, so let's uh, save this for your records. So file, save as. You're going to put it on your desktop, in your image editing folder. This is week three. And you're going to call it. It's Farmer's Market. That's fine. Hit save. And then for me to grade what you did, I want you to take your zoom factor. Let's try 165, 165 down there. Let's try 145, 145. 
that's better. All right, so this is what I see. I want you to hold Command and Shift with your left hand, press the number three with your right. Minimize this. You've got that picture. I don't want this. You got this picture on your canvas, and it should show up right there. You're going to right click it, choose Rename, and you're going to call this Farmers Market, and you're going to move that into your image editing folder week three and drop it. All right, so now you have the PNG file, the farmer's market as well. So that's that. I want you to go to Schoology and upload each of these pictures to the appropriate link. If you are doing this assignment late, if you got behind, um, the assignment link for each one of these will be locked and closed, but you can still turn them into your current week's late folder. So each week I'm going to have multiple late folders that are out there. And you can turn whatever assignment in, or every assignment you want to turn in late to one of those folders. You just got to keep in mind, you can only upload one assignment to each folder because each time you upload, it replaces what you currently put it there. So I'm going to make sure there's at least five to ten late folders per week um, so you have a place to turn in your work. So hope you had fun, guys. Uh, take care.